flowers. And, you know, I think that the most beautiful thing I saw was uh, the artists, the new artists playing and watching them react to their new fans, watching them react as people came through the door to hear their music and you'd see their faces light up, or you'd see them get nervous, or you'd see them start performing a little harder. And, oh, it made me so happy, you know, it was, I'd say that um, the vibe actually reminded me a lot of the bars that I used to hang out in all the time with Starlight and Semi Precious Weapons and the Dirty Pearls. You know, we were, they came with me last night and they were all like saying that it was the best party they've been to in the longest time. And I think it's because, you know, I think all music lovers are connected. And anytime you put music lovers in a room with beer, and a shitty sound system. Everybody gets no. excited. Um, this next one, I, you, you always strike me as a no regrets kind of person, so I'm not sure how you feel about this, but it says, looking, this is from Stephen in New York City, looking back on your path to success, what, if anything, would you do differently if you had a second chance? If I had a second chance. You know, I really wouldn't do anything differently. I really wouldn't. I, I, I'm so, I'm, I'm, I, I can't believe every day I wake up, I pinch myself. I can't believe I get to make music and travel the world. And, and then I have so many people who love it. Thank you. Thank you. And that's, that's really it. You know, um, I, I'm very hard on myself. But I don't think that's bad. No. I think all artists are. I think we all are very critical and kind of innately damaged. And that's why we make things to fix ourselves. We were saying the other night, you know, I think one thing you and I share is that we both have a tendency to be a little self deprecating. Yeah, self deprecating. And <laughs> I always tell people when they say they're saying, why why do you why are you dumb yourself too much? I said, because I prefer that to the alternative. And there's way too much of the alternative out there nowadays, right? Yeah. So um, this one completely relates to that moment when applause happened last night with all with Starlight and all the others from New York. And um, So the question is, what was the saddest part about rising up and away from that club scene of New York City, and what is the happiest part? Well, I'll start with the happiest. The happiest part about it is that they're all still here with me. And, you know, nothing is more amazing than getting to see the world and bringing all your friends with you. All your friends that you got changed with in the bathroom stalls before you... I used to open for Semi Precious Weapons before their show. I remember sitting on my bed on Stanton Street in my... My apartment was like the size of this stage. And I got a phone call that they wanted me to open for them and I started screaming. And I called Lady Starlight and I told her to come over and we set up turntables in my kitchen. <laughs> wow. And, you know, the best thing about it is, you know, whether we're at South by on stage together looking out at the crowd or when we were in Mexico City, I brought them all out on stage with me there, and we're standing in front of 80,000 people singing every word to Born This Way, and we're just looking at each other and, and going, oh my gosh, every crazy idea that we ever had. Look where we are, look where it took us. You know, we didn't have to change who we were. I didn't let anybody change me. I never let anybody tell me what to do. And as soon as I did, I'll say the saddest, right, the hardest thing about it is it's so hard to say no when you see how many people's lives are affected by the business that we're doing and you see people making money and you see their businesses growing. <coughs> And then they start to really depend on you to keep that money flow happening and they really want you to, I don't know, maybe they want me to be more perfect or brush my hair or, uh, 
you know, not do anything that's too crazy, or they just want me to come, you know, oh, we have it now, you know, you don't have to do anything. And this, so the sad part is that at some point you have to look at those people that, you know, believe in you and say, you know, my talent matters more to me than the money does. And, and what I have to say matters more to me than the money does. And I know that it's fun being on top, and I know it's fun having everybody wish that, you know, they were number one. But having people envy you really isn't fun at all. Having people feel a part of you and feel one with you, that's the greatest feeling that there is. You told me a story the other night similar to that about when you came home from the, uh, from the art break from the launch party in Brooklyn. And didn't you say there were like kids sort of outside your place? And they had been there, and they said they'd never experienced a night quite like that. And I just, I, I could tell that was a real moment that stuck with you. Yeah, they were, there was like a hundred, two hundred, I don't hundreds <laughs> of kids covered in baby coon sculptures <laughs> and beautiful outfits, and they had taken their wigs off and their masks, and they'd all had too much to drink. And they were all standing on the footsteps of my of my apartment and they they stopped screaming and they stopped pulling and asking for pictures and they just all looked at me and they said, Gaga, I've never had so much fun in my whole life. And that's the coolest I've ever felt in my whole life. And you know, that's really all that I ever could ask for is to make somebody feel that way make someone feel the way that I felt the first time I walked into a bar and saw Lady Starlight doing her performance art. The first time I walked into a club at Pianos and saw Semi Precious Weapons playing. Or the first time that my ex-boyfriend took me to see the Dirty Pearls and I took my bra off and ran on stage. <laughs> it's like those moments in music that's what it's all about, is that experience. It's not about the picture you got for your Twitter. It's about that thing that changed your life, that made you want to be a star, that made you want to go for it. And that's the sad thing, is when you, you miss it, you want to go back. Sure. But I don't have to miss it, because they're all here with me. And I can go back whenever I want, because I would give it up all tomorrow if it meant I had to sell my soul to this business. Don't do it. Don't sell out to this business. S sell in. Sell in. Um, whoever, the South by folks listening to this, I can't see the clock from where I'm sitting, so <laughs> I'm depending on someone to give me a wrap. We're song. a deeply professional duo, <laughs> We are. Yeah, um, I'm, I'll never be a real professional. <laughs> anyway, um, so the next one, I'm just going to keep going for a couple more of these. Um, what is the one thing that you were told to be or do as a little girl that if you had listened to it, you would not be where you are today? Pardon me. Any bad advice? Or... Well, how little are we talking? <laughs> when I was really, really little, um, my parents actually were very amused by my eccentricities, I guess. And they, you, my mom used to yell at me if I took all my clothes off and ran around from the baby and babysitter, but, you know, everybody does that, right? <laughs> I will say that around like 15 years old, because I've been playing piano since I was four years old, and I started writing music around 11. And then 15, my dad and I went to Manny's Music in New York, and I got a Tascam tape deck and a Shure microphone, and I learned how to record myself, which is pretty rare for 
a female, and you can imagine me hanging out with a bunch of dudes, right, going, oh, should we record it? And I'm like, what do you know about recording? <laughs> <laughs> then I started taking out compressors and impressing everybody. Um, I found the, what, what well, they told me was to be less huh? theatrical. Yeah? Yeah. Wow. We think you're too theater. <laughs> and I would say, but, but Freddie Mercury was theater. And David Bowie was theater. And, you know, Sergeant Pepper, even though people didn't like it when it first came out, at one point later, it was everybody's favorite Beatles album, even though mine is Abbey Road. And, you know, I never thought theater was a bad thing, but in the music business when I first started, like younger, younger, when people started seeing me play out, they. Everyone started hearing about me, even when I was really wee thing. And they would say, you know, she's too theatrical. So if I had listened to them, I definitely wouldn't be here today because I would be sad and depressed and I would be an awful person if I didn't do what I love. Because doesn't everyone feel that way when you stifle yourself? You're miserable. Don't do it. Don't do it. Okay, I'm gonna get to one more and then I got one more for myself and so then we're gonna wrap things up. I'm Lisa B, and we kind of touched on this already uh, a little bit, wants to know that throughout your journey, what was the greatest challenge maintaining individuality and uniqueness in an industry that so often requires artists to conform? That was the challenge. That That's is the, the challenge. Thing. That is the challenge. <laughs> that yeah. is the challenge. That is the challenge. Is, you know, once you, once you have, you know, so many people's attention, and once you have so much, they just, they think that you know, as a female, that it's better for me to make inconsequential music and not assert that I'm a musician, not assert that I'm a producer, not assert that I'm a songwriter, not assert that I'm a performance artist and just look beautiful. I think that that's been the, that's the thing that poisoned me from 2013 to 2000. 14 or 2012, but that was, that was the poisonous thing. We just want you to look beautiful over and over and over in my head until I just wanted to look ugly all the time. I'm rebellious. Because when you get pushed back, you want to do the opposite. Oh, please. Yeah. Like, don't tell me not to do it because then, you know, it's going to happen. Because right. I just, that's the way that I am. And, and it really crushed me. Like, really? I've won Grammys now. I've written albums. I've toured the world four times. You're telling me to be beautiful? That's what this is about? It's my t is it all back to tits and ass? That's so sad. That's weird to me to hear that you still get that. Yeah. yeah. Well, I don't now. Yeah. <laughs> I don't now. I'm in a good place. I have wonderful people around me. And they're all here on my team. I love you. Love you so See, much. I, I, I met some of them. See, my, okay, they're giving me two minutes, two minutes more, but um, or I guess 119. Um, but I, I can, so I'm going to quickly ask you these uh, two things. The tour begins in May. Anything, even in a sort of general sense, you want to say about the this art rate tour and how it's going to be different conceptually to what we've seen in the past? It's going to be a great big show. Yeah. And it's going to be really fun, and we have a beautiful custom stage, and I'm going to, um, I'm going to release the stage this week to the fans to see, so you can look at it. Lots of Kuhn's presence, and Abramovich presence, and that kind of thing? Actually, no. No? Not no. So much. Well, you know, the, um, those collaborations and things, uh, they're part of me now. You know, and they're part of the fans. And I think what the art rave, what the art pop ball is all about is us really celebrating all the albums, celebrating this new one. And I want to do, you know, not the same type of show that I did in Austin, obviously different, but that same sort of atmosphere, that, that fully passionate, creative, rebellious fun where you can all just come and be yourselves for the night and then take it home with you. I love you. Okay. I got, 
I, I, I know this, this is selfish of me, but I want, I'm, I'm going to give her a second to say one more thing. I just want to say that it, the, the fact that you are among every artist at your level, and I'm talking about going back 30 years to some of the most what, we, what they like to refer to as gay icons in pop music, you are the most tireless, tirelessly committed to LGBT issues of anyone I've ever known and been witness to. And A, thank you for that. And B, when you look around to where we're in right now, from the madness that's going on in Russia in the, on, on that level, to horrific places like Uganda, and by the way, you don't have to look that far, two states away to Arizona, where thankfully that was squashed, but similar initiatives are underway in about a half a dozen places. What is your, I mean, we've, we've made a blinding progress, you know, in the last few years on so many fronts, LGBT fronts, and, that, and there's this almost desperate pushback from people, you know, in all parts of the world. Do you have, quickly, finally, any, any, any thoughts on this sort of? It's not gonna be easy to maintain the steps forward, but we have to, band together, hands and arms and muscles, and walk forward against the hatred and the negativity and the prejudice and fight for equality and fight for love and continue to fight for it all over the world. You know, you bring up Russia and it's like, we brought a lot of attention to Russia recently and now look what's happening. Yeah, yeah. And don't make a deal with the devil. And you look at people like someone like Pussy Riot who got so much attention last year. Folks, that's a real bold mission, okay? That's yes. your real bold mission. That is the real bold mission. And we can all be truly bold as, as a group here today, everyone who's watching, and just all leave and, you know, in the spirit also of, you know, that the terrible tragedy the other night. Yeah. Let's all leave here inspired to be good to one another in every way we can. Through technology, through music, through our shows, through government, through business. It's all going to come back to all of us as if it's killing one person. At some point, it's going to kill all of us at the same time. So let's, let's, save, let's save this beautiful world that we have and let's fight for what's right. And thank God we have her. I love you so much. Thank you. And thank you guys.